Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, the founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. And today we have Sabrina Oso. I'm very excited. She's the founder and CEO of Oso Safe. She's a TEDx speaker, a, re a real estate agent, and a consultant of promoting safety and preventing violence in the workspace, schools, and places of residence. Sabrina's personal and professional experience with the subject allows her to bring a unique and holistic approach to a solution. She is also a professional dancer and a teacher who uses her performance abilities to educate on the subject. As a real estate agent, Sabrina is bridging the real estate industry with Oh So Safe. Sabrina, we are so excited and so honored to have you on this show. Can you let everybody know a little about yourself and tell everybody what you do? Sure, sure. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Stacy. We love doing these interviews. It's a great platform. Um, as you explained, I'm founder and CEO of Oso oh Safe, Feel Safe Where You Live, Work, and Play. I'm a speaker and consultant on promoting safety and preventing violence in the workplace, schools, but in particular in your place of residence. Mm -hmm. um, we combine education and technology to promote safety and prevent violence. I could go into more detail about what we do specifically, but um, yeah, that's me in a nutshell, basically. Now, how did this come about? Like, how, how did this all get started? Yes, uh, I've had enough therapy. Uh, I've been in and out of therapy for quite some time now where I'm comfortable to say that I am a victim or a survivor of violence, I should say. My father beat my mother on a regular basis. Mm. Uh, my mother would beat me. So I know how traumatic and how uh detrimental living in that type of environment is it affects your whole being it affects your relationships it affects your friendships so um I, I did what i was supposed to do i got a degree i went to school um i and and i found uh, i have a degree in computer science and i i hated it <laughs> I hated it, it, the corporate world, yeah. so to speak, you know, so, yeah. um, and I, I moved out and, uh, that's where I really, I really found out who I was basically. Right. Cause when you live in that type of environment, you have to heal from what was done. And so you're, you're kind of, you kind of spend your adulthood healing from your childhood. Right. And um, I moved out and I, I was heavy duty clubbing. I loved the club scene. I was a heavy duty club girl hitting all of, I'm in close proximity to New York city. So I hit all the clubs. I, it was great. I, I love that. And my therapist said, Sabrina, you're a dancer. You need to go dance. I, I mean, I couldn't even think about dancing growing up. I could not even mention it. I was yeah. too busy saving my father from my mother, um, police, courts, very bad, very bad. So I started taking dance classes. I was auditioning. I was heavy duty training. And, um, and then I, I started writing my one woman show called Home Sweet Home, question mark. Right. And I play different women being abused mm -hmm. in the show. She goes to her good place. That's where the dancing comes in. Right. But then she's pulled back into the terror of violence. Mm -hmm. But the show ends really strong, really empowering. And I did a lot of research for the show. And I could not believe the statistics that I was finding. I, I was blown away by how common this is. Yeah. So... I said to myself, I need to make this into a business, a bona fide business with products and services that could really help people. So that's how Oh So Safe was born out of this one woman show um, and, and out of my pain that I'm, I'm doing everything that I can to turn pain into power. Now, I think, you know, the first thing we need to express to the audience is 
people don't realize how many people are affected by emotional and physical abuse. Everyone thinks they're alone. And that's where the problem is, is that they are, they feel alone and they don't know where to, to get that right help. Now explain to people the statistics so they really realize how common this is in our society. It blows me away when I look at the numbers, how common domestic, domestic and emotional abuse is in our right. society. Right. One out of three women will be beaten or raped in her lifetime. One out of five adolescent girls is abused by her boyfriend. One out of three young people will be in an abusive relationship. Right. One out of seven men is abused. 15 million children witness violence in their own homes each and every year. That's just in the U.S., Mm -hmm. About 324,000 pregnant women go into the emergency room, not for pregnant related issues, but for abuse related <sighs> injuries. Yeah. Um, there are 2 million incidents of workplace violence that occurs. That's about 33,000 per week. And of those 17 result in a murder, 85% of all spouse murderers are male. 80% of all runaways come from violent homes. I could go on and on with statistics, but those are the most, uh, those are just off the top of my head that I use in my TEDx talk and I use in my speaking engagements and in my workshops and seminars just to really magnify how serious the problem is. And mind you, Stacy, I kind of lied. All those statistics, I lied. Because those are just the ones based on what we know that is right. reported. So never mind the ones that are not reported. Yeah. So it's even worse than what I'm saying. But I don't want to say to your listeners that, wow, we might as well just throw in the towel. This is hopeless. We're not saying that at all. Right. We are providing bona fide services, bona fide solutions that we really do believe that will it will diminish mm -hmm. and eventually prevent home violence. So we're very positive about the whole thing. But first you have to outline the problem and then implement, introduce and implement the solution, right? So those are the statistics are the problem. That's right. what's happening. So, uh, so yeah, so it's very, it, it's, it's just, it's an epidemic. Yeah. That's what it is. So you know what I find too is when a person comes from a dysfunctional family, a lot of times they marry into a dysfunctional family because they think it's the normality or they've been told so many times how worthless they are, they tend to believe it. So they don't look to hire themselves. So these people with low self-esteem and hopelessness in their lives, how do we, how do you get them to actually come out of their shell and actually reach out and try to find help? Like, how, you know, because if a person keeps thinking I'm worthless, this is what I deserve, you know, the, you know, my spouse, my partner, whoever keeps telling me I'm worthless, you know, you're seeing, you're getting beat. They're scared. They're scared. They have yes. low self-esteem. How does this person get help? How do they get the enough of strength? What are your suggestions, to, you know, to get right. that to the next step? Right. Yes. If you come from violence, it's very easy to fall into that trap again with your future relationships, whatever they may be, where you repeat the cycle. We instruct at Oh So Safe that you have to know, and I want to say this to all your listeners, including you, including myself, you deserve to be in a good relationship. You deserve to be in a good relationship. You have to say that over and over and over again until it becomes true. This is a practice, safe, uh, Stacey. This is not something, okay, you wake up one morning, you're cured, everything is okay. No, it is a practice indeed. You have to practice positivity. You have to practice empowerment. You have to practice encouragement. And you have to practice how to be safe. So if you're, we're not saying you're never going to get into a fight with your significant other. We're not saying, oh, everything is going to be perfect. No, of course, you're going to have disagreements. You're going right. to have conflict, but it should never, ever, ever cross the line of abuse. 
not verbally, not physically, not sexually. That's what we're saying. Right. And this is indeed a practice, how to communicate. If something bothers you, don't keep it inside. And in fact, you could you could be very effective in your speech and, and being honest and say, look, um, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever the case may be, I don't like it when you do X, Y, Z. And you don't have to yell. You don't have to scream in order to get your point across right. because that's what you learned as a kid, right? That in order yeah. for me to get what I want or get what I, what I want, what I, what it, the results that I want, I have to scream. I have to yell. I have to hit. No, in fact, it's much easier than that. All you have to do is ex explain clearly what it is that you want and not and not yell and scream. And it'll come across as uh, respect. Right. You have to respect. That's the number one ingredient missing yeah. in any dysfunctional, violent, chaotic, abusive relationship, even with your kids. Yeah, it's respect. You have to respect one another from teeny tiny toddlers right. all the way up to adults. That is in households that are violent, there is no respect. No. You do as I say, these are the rules. I'm the boss. You right. do. I'm the commander. That's not a family. No. That is not a family. That's not a partnership. That is a war zone. That's yeah. Hitler. Yeah. That's a, uh, a, um, a battleground. So, so what we're saying at Oh So Safe, and just to answer and touch upon also to answer your, your question, how do you help people? We're saying in real estate is where the foundation happens, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're born, you go to home, whatever home is, a townhouse, a co-op, a condo, a single family, family home, a multifamily dwelling, a two-family home, a villa, a mansion, a mobile home, you go home. Right. Then you go to school and then you go to work right. when you're of age. Yeah. So it's those three markets that we concentrate on, but right. home, real estate, we, we're not a charity, we're not a nonprofit. And and we respect all of the charities and nonprofits that deal with domestic violence. We, we don't even like to call it domestic violence. We prefer to say home violence because it's more inclusive. Uh, home is whatever makes up your home environment. It depends who you live with. So we're saying we are introducing into the real estate industry the OSO Safe certification. What does that mean? What is that? We're saying, and we are now focusing on the landlord 10 portion of the industry, but we want this to propagate over all residency, whether you rent, whether you own, whether you have a mortgage or not. We're saying, okay, Mr. and Ms. Landlord, get your property also safe certified. That means hire us. You purchase the Oso oh Safe Home Sweet Home package. It consists of a policy, a seminar, an app, and therapists assigned to the property. So we're saying the policy. Everybody signs the policy, all of your tenants, both adults and children for that mm -hmm. matter. And we're saying in the policy estates, okay, I promise to provide you a safe space for you to live. You in turn is my tenant. You promise to not act in any way, shape, or form abusively. Otherwise, you, the abuser only, gets immediately evicted from the premises. Mm -hmm. And we go into full knowledge knowing that that would be the consequences. So that way, everybody else is protected in the, in the rental, in, in the building, if you right. will. The second part is a seminar the Home Sweet Home Seminar, everybody gets educated on facts, statistics, warning signs, definitions of abuse, the difference between abuse and discipline, what constitutes a good relationship. So that way, you know, you know that if I, if you pull your partner's hair, well, that constitutes abuse. You just learned it. We don't tolerate that behavior in a no so safe certified property. The third component is the app. Now my app is being updated right now, but this app will detect violent like movements and captures them in real time, issuing alerts to the tenant and the landlord. So let's say you have 10 units, you get an alert. Wow. 
I just saw you beat the crap out of her in my unit two, and you just beat the crap out of him in my unit 10. This is grounds for eviction. You knew that this was going to happen. You got to go. I have to protect everybody else in my building. And then the fourth component are therapists assigned to the property. It's part of your residency. Right. So you are required once a month to check in with your therapist. Is everything okay? Do you feel like anything is looming? Just to give an example. Well, Mr. and Miss Therapist, my kid came home with bad grades. We're not going to beat him up. We're not going to verbally disparage her. We know better. We live in a no so safe certified property, but help us through this because we don't know how to handle this. All of the, now I really, I really put it simply. There's other components to the certification, but just mm -hmm. to, for the sake of this interview, another important component of the certification is that children have agency over their lives way before 18 years old. So if dad is beating up mom and mom is beating up dad or the child is getting abused, we don't wait until they're 18 because quite frankly, Stacey, it's too late to do something when yeah. they're 18. A child knows who makes them feel safe. Right. A child knows if they're safe with mom and dad, great. If they're safe with only dad, if they're safe with only mom, if they're safe with an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, a close family friend, we jot that down. And we know that the child could, could lie, right? They could right. say, yeah, I'm safe with mom and dad, but dad is beating up mom. Abusive behavior will reveal itself. Mm -hmm. They could put their poker face on for a week, a day, a month, but rest assured, they will show their true colors right. pretty quickly in residency. So we get that child to safety because we know in a no-so-safe certified property, according to the child and the behavior behaviors and what's going on, who makes them feel safe. Right. So all of these components working together is on the preventative side versus waiting for an episode of violence to occur. Police come, the whole building is in an uproar. And then you have your good paying, well-behaved, safe tenants leave. And then you're stuck with the abusive family. We flip all of that with yeah. also safe certifications. So this is our core product that we are introducing in the, into the real estate industry. And I have to say, once this catches on and gains more and more momentum, yeah. momentum, people will not want to live anywhere else unless it's an also safe certified property. Now, what about the privacy issue? Some people, you know, what happens if they, you have a couple and they are a healthy couple and maybe they have a, a romantic um, uh, rendezvous and they don't want cameras, you know, all over the place, you know, you know, they don't want, you know, certain things, you know, being, you know, revealed on, you know, a recording or a, a, a video. Right. The record, the, the, the app only detects violence. So, and it matches your facial recognition and artificial intelligence. So that's what it's using. So it's not going to pick up conversations. It's not going to pick up documents, I see. strictly violence. So a slap, a hit, a punch, a rape, a, a cigarette burn. Um, it'll pick up uh, kicking, punching, all of that. So, um, and we say at Oh So Safe, uh, I get the privacy. And yes, it, it's your right, right? You you have privacy in it is your right to be private. However, we cannot sacrifice sacrifice safety for mm -hmm. privacy. So if a child is getting abused, if a if someone is getting uh, uh, physically assaulted, sexually assaulted, well, what good are we doing? by letting that happen because, well, it's my right, it's private. No, this is is counterproductive. You know, right. it's, it's not going to help anyone if there's a rapist in the building, if there's a sexual assaulter in the building, if, if dad and mom are, are verbally, physically, sexually abusing you, it affects everything and everyone's residency because you right. hear screaming and yelling. You oh, hear yeah. the children uh, being uh, yelling and screaming and they're crying. I mean, that affects everybody's residency. So, um, and the app, like I said, is being 
more perfected, more, mm -hmm. uh, more improved upon. And that'll, that is just going to continue. But, um, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it makes for better, safer residency makes for better residency and therefore it's better for business all around. Now for people like, cause this is a service that is starting to be, you know, um, recognized and starting to be used across the country. Now for, for buildings or for uh, residential homes that, you know, don't have the OSO safe yet. Now, what does, do you have things on your website or do you have suggestions that people who are in a, a an abusive and violent home, whether it's the child, the, the husband, wife, whatever. Do you have resources? Because every state is different. Or some states have more resources than others or a national resource organization that they can go to in confidence and say, hey, you know, I'm getting hurt. I don't want no, I don't want my husband or wife to know that I'm calling. Or I don't want my mom and dad to know that I'm calling, but I need help. Right. We are looking to have cert the OSO safe certification propagate over all residency, as I mentioned before, all residency. So okay. we are speaking to the insurance companies and the mortgage companies to say, Excellent. look, partner with us yes. because every you could own your property outright. Right. right. So you don't, you're not, you're not tied to a rental or anything, but you own your property outright, but there should be safety there. So we are speaking to insurance companies, to mortgage companies to say, partner with us. Let's, let's merge and let's make this a safety, a required standard condition of residency. So if you act like a beast, like a barbarian, like a savage in your home, you get dropped from the lease, you get dropped from title, and you'll see how fast domestic home violence will, will decrease yeah. and it'll be prevented once you put money on the table, once you put a dollar sign, attach a dollar sign to address your, your other part of the, um, your question, what do I do? What are the resources? I have to say, call the police, hire a lawyer. If you have the money to do so, you're going to be in court. You're going to have, if you have children, it's a hundred times worse where you have mediators and parent coordinators and don't even get me started on the child protective service agencies and the judges, I have to say, they make horrible matters even worse. Mm -hmm. So you could do all of that. Those are all resources, right? You go to an attorney, they're going to tell you what your rights are and to stay in the property, not stay in the property, your ex-husband, your ex-wife, the children are going to have to move. They're going to have to relocate, go to a shelter. And the judges are, you're going to be before a judge that I have to say, Stacy. a lot of them, unfortunately, are unqualified, ignorant, incompetent, useless. Right. And I'm, I'm speaking from personal and professional experience. Mm -hmm. In fact, they almost side more with the abuser, with the mm -hmm. abusive parent. They, they'll give you, you could, your child could be getting sexually assaulted and you have proof. You yeah. present doctor reports. You present bruises, pictures, documentation. And the judge will say, well, he's the father or she's the mother. They have rights. I mean, it's just mind boggling, wow. mind boggling. So you could go that route. And I have to say, you will be worse off than when you entered the courtroom. Uh, or at the end of entering the courtroom, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars hiring lawyers, then if you just hired us, get us into your properties, um, and and document do document. I I have to say, document as much as you can, and get us into your properties. Then if you just not even enter the courtroom, save your money. Um, uh, and, and teach your child, look, this is not how the life that I want for you, you deserve better mommy and daddy fighting, 
Um, this is not how, how I want you to grow up. This is not a normal relationship. So explain to your child that you're doing your best to, to make this as smooth as possible. But if you're dealing with an abusive partner, that you're looking to get divorced, that you're looking to uh, uh, separate yourself from, the courts are horrible. I have to say, so what I'm trying to propose to the real estate industry, we're working as fast as we can, get us into your buildings, get us into your residences, because this is how residency needs to move. Um, and you won't even need the courts. Uh, everything that we do, mm -hmm. we check with a small team of lawyers, okay. everything that we do. And on, on my team is a, a family lawyer. She specializes in divorce and family okay. law. And she told, me, ask you. she told me, Sabrina, with your certifications and you gaining more and more momentum, you are short circuiting the entire process. And she's saying it as a, as a positive, as a right. compliment, because you won't need the courts. What do you need the courts for? You resolve it right in residency. You do. We do use police in case the abuser doesn't want to leave, mm -hmm. but they sign the policy. You got educated. You have therapists assigned to the to the to the property. You have the technology uh, installed. What do you need? What else do you need? You have to go. You're the abuser. The rest of the family can stay provided that they can still pay the rent or the mortgage. And mm -hmm. that's another facet of the certification. But I could tell you once you remove the violence aspect, the abuse aspect, right. you're at peace. You can live your life and say, wow, I deserve to be in a good relationship. My kids are seeing me in, in better circumstances. Um, we, we are thriving now. We, I could hold my job. Mm -hmm. Um, my, we're not in and out of court. We, we can actually, I could actually bring my kid to dance or to football and be at peace. And I'm doing well on my job. Once you remove that violence abuse aspect, you mm -hmm. become a functioning member of society. Um, yeah, so I hope I answered the question. No, you did. Now, what about school systems? Like, are you are you doing anything with the school systems? Because you have yeah. heard instances where you they have been teacher and student abuse, either sexual abuse or verbal abuse in the school system itself. Now, do you yeah. have anything planned for that? Or are you doing anything now? Yes. I mean, with COVID, a lot of our speaking engagements, workshops, and seminars were at a standstill, right? right? So we are picking that up again. But yes, we speak at schools of all grades, universities, and we instruct teachers like what to look out for and to kind of be our ally. Because at school, they see the students who's behaving badly, mm -hmm. who is having attention uh, yeah. problems, their grades are poor, or they act out at school. But nine times out of 10, all of that really is the student going home to hell. Hell. Yeah. Absolute hell. Right. So, so we are saying to, see, to, to teachers, to superintendents, to principals get us into your schools. We will break it down for you. These students need you. So don't label them as a troublesome student. It's that home life is hell. Yeah. So if we resolve it, you, you cannot, you cannot resolve it at school unless you resolve it at home first. Right. You got, you have to resolve it at home, which is what we're doing because we're bridging the two, right? School yes. and, and home, work and home. It all starts in the home. So if we make home safe, I guarantee your students will perform better at school. You will have a student that's much more calmer and can absorb the material more. They will have a better outlook on life. But you have to make that connection and 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 
be open about it. You can't pretend, you know, you talk about anti-bullying and, you know, you have to share and, 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 and not be violent. That's great at school, Mm -hmm. but at home, they're getting a very different message. Well, my dad just beat the crap out of my mom or my mom just beat the crap out of me. Right. You have as a school, as a, as a, as an educational institution, you have to talk about it. Why do you think these school shootings happen? Right. Guaranteed all of them. If you look back on their home life, it was hell. It was hell because all of those shooters started out as young children and needed to be nipped in the bud then in kindergarten, first grade, second grade. By the time they become 18, 19, 20 years old, it's too late. Yeah. It's too late. So we make that connection. We we do go into schools. It's all on my website, how to how to book us, if you will. And 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 we have we we do offer tools and on how to talk about this because it is a taboo subject, but it's one that's necessary and uh, your students will thank you for it. Now, I saw that on your website, you have tons of stuff. You have, you know, you have stuff about um, the different real estates. You have the services. You have the app. Tell people all the different things that you offer. You also have a blog I saw. Right, right. Yes. Uh, the We have, it's all on my website, uh, ososafe.com. The, the Oso, safe certifications explained all of the contents of it, the components of it, mm-hmm. um, how to book us into schools with our workshops, into the workplace with our seminars, um, speaking engagements. But I want to say that we also have a children's book coming out uh, that will help students speak out on their own behalf. Um, We have to give agency uh, to kids over their lives. And this book will facilitate that. It's called a home safe home for you and me. I still, I'm still working all of the illustrations and everything, but it will be out. I am hoping by mid to late September, Okay, but this is good for parents. This is good for grandparents. And it explains very simply what it means to be safe at home yeah. and what it means uh, if you're getting, if you're not safe at home. So I use those two phrases, safe at home and not safe at home. I and like to that. say, yeah. And to say to children that it's not your fault and mm-hmm. that to when you go back to school to say, I want to live where I am. Oh, so safe. And I am oh so safe with fill in the blank. Who right. is that? Mom, dad, stepmom, stepdad, an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, a close family friend, and that you want to be where you're safe. So that's what the book is all about. And I love that. I I think that's a great idea. And I hope when you do have the book published, you can come on and, you know, talk about the book, show everybody about the book and, you know, explain further about how important it is to overcome and get out of an abusive relationship or an abusive environment. Because, you know, when you talk to people, sometimes they'll be in their 50s, 60s, and even 70s, and they talk about the abuse that they experienced as a child. Whatever happens on when you're a child follows you through life. And, you know, right. I think with therapy, like you had mentioned, you offer therapists, people can overcome that negative behavior and learn how to move forward in life and actually not replicate that abusive um, behavior that they learned as a child or in that relationship that they were in. And I I think that's an excellent, you know, um, thing that you're doing, you know, between the um, Oso Safe website and all the components that you offer on it and the app and now the book, you could actually help people and guide them and help them learn how to get out of the abusive relationship, how to save themselves through therapy, and then actually how to move on into a positive future that they deserve because they are good people and they deserve a better life. And I love what you're doing. And I hope you will come back to the show once the book is published and you can show everybody the book and we can talk further about abusive relationships. Because even when I spoke to an officer, he said, you know, pretty much 60 to 70% of the calls he gets are, you know, fighting 
abusive oh. behavior in the family, in the family residence. So this is something that's prevalent. It's been prevalent for decades, thousands of years. Violence has always, you know, been something that we have battled with. But there are ways to actually get out of the environment and actually move forward. So I thank you and I praise what you're doing. I think you're doing a great job. And one more time, tell everybody your website so they don't forget it and they can go if they're looking for help and they need a way out. Yes, ososafe.com. That's O-S-S-O-S-A-F-E.com. And I also have a an Safe Kids YouTube channel as well for kids that I speak uh, to kids of all ages from pre-K all the way up to high school and they could look that up oh so safe kids and I have a bunch of videos that will help them heal and and uh, and just honor their pain and to turn it into power so I thank you Stacy for the positive incur the the uh, uh, positive feedback that we really appreciate it and we'll definitely come back for sure yes. I, I hope you will, because this is the topic I think we need to talk about more because there are so many people that are being abused and so many things going on and it can fall into depression and it can right. fall into a lot of things and even suicide. Right. So this is something that right. really needs to be, you know, addressed more. And I would love to have you back on the show. And thank you so much for everything, everything that you're doing. Thank you. Likewise. Yes. Have a great day. You too.